And we're back, so yeah, let's continue on with the final mysteries. Case of the International Idol. Come on. I hate these black screens. <laughs> or these white screens, or you know, any sort of screen that we've just been playing. Ah, the radio. Attention all units, the search for the missing Buddha is over. The valuable statue was found in Andrew Jackson's suite of the Swanks Hotel. Wow, I heard about the stolen Buddha from the news. It was stolen from the monastery in Tibet three weeks ago. Top detectives all over the world are on the case. All suspects, we've made several sus- we've- <laughs> all suspects. All units, we've made several suspects but made no arrest. Repeat, we've made no arrest. Further investigation needed. Lead detective is Mr. Wat Fan. <laughs> Visiting us from Hong Kong. Case headquarters is the Richview Police Station. That is all. I heard that Mrs. Polari was hosting an international art show at Swang's Hotel. I wonder if she knows about the stolen Buddha. Come on, Rizoka. Let's go down to Swang's and inter interview the suspects. Yes. Oh, Swang's Hotel. Maybe we can find something at the site where the stolen Buddha was found. Hi, Mrs. Case. Hi, Mrs. Case. We were we heard about there was some exciting little, little, little. let me say that again. We heard that there was some excitement here at the hotel. Yes, I certainly hope that this publicity is about the stolen art doesn't hurt the hotel. The police found the stolen statue up in Mrs. Jackson's suite, where Mrs. Polaria held her art show. Hmm. I know that the Buddha wasn't there earlier this evening when Mrs. Polaria and I looked over the suite, and then we saw all the people who visited Mrs. Polaria. Who were the people who visited Mrs. Polaria? Uh, ask Chuck. He's better than names than I am. Later, everyone came down, and Mr. Green, the banker, took them to a restaurant in his car. Right after that, the police arrived. Hi, Chuck. Hi, Chuck. Did you see all the people who went up to Mr. Andrew Jackson's suite? And did you notice which ones were carrying boxes? You bet. First, it was Mrs. Polaria. I held, I carried her two boxes for her. She had two. I had to be real careful. She tipped me ten bucks. That fellow with the English accent, Charles uh, Chutney Miles, or I would rather be called Miles Chutney myself, was with Mrs. Polaria. He carried one art box. Then the Chinese woman, Madame Wen, arrived in a cab with her daughter May. They didn't have any boxes. I thought that was kind of strange. Then Mrs. Boran and Mrs. Juiced went up to her suite. Mrs. Boran wasn't staying here. Oh, Mrs. Baran's been staying here, actually. She was really sweet. They each had one art, bo art box. And and what about when they came down? Oh, well, they all came down, and they, they all had the same number of boxes as they went up. Except for Mrs. Polaria. I remember because she had two boxes when she went up, and when she came down, she only had one and didn't need any help. She wouldn't let me touch it. Boy, Chuck, you have a great memory. Thanks. Oh, Mrs. Polaria. Hello, Mrs. Polaria. Hello, Sergeant Nails. Can you tell us what happened? Certainly. I invited a few of international customers up here. One of them placed a box containing the stolen Buddha under the sofa. We were also busy buying and selling our art treasures. Any one of them could have done it easily. I'm afraid we all use the same type of box to transport our treasures. Uh, we searched the suite because we caught an international art thief at the airport. The detective from Hong Kong had been tracking the Buddha. Detective Fan spotted the thief as soon as he got off the plane from Amsterdam. The thief wanted the judge to go easy on him, so he confessed that he was supposed to pick up the Buddha from beneath the snow sofa and deliver it to a collector in New York. Sure enough, we searched the suite and found the statue, but nobody knows who brought it here. Till we find out, I'm watching Mrs. Polaria. Can we go up and search the Andrew Jackson suite for clues? Not without a search warrant! I must insist in protecting my privacy, and because we couldn't be bothered animating another scene. Uh, Mrs. Bellar will not let us look into the box she brought down from the suite. She says it contains art she doesn't want other collectors to know she has. She says it's irrelevant to solving the case. That is correct. I'm innocent, and I'm sure other clues will prove that. In the meantime, if you want to pry into my personal affairs, you must first talk to my lawyer. You're just children, after all. Oh, gosh. To the police station. Dum, 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 dum. Why 
had to have Chief Barton for the facts of the case. Hello, Rizoga. Hello, Jennifer. Glad to see you're on the case. We can get down oh, we can get all the help we need. The statements of the four suspects are recorded on video in my file cabinet. Mrs. Juice is our fifth suspect. She's waiting here for, for Mr. Fan, the detective from Hong Kong, to ask her some more questions. Mr. Fan has been following this case since the theft was reported in Tibet three weeks ago. I think he was at the bank where we keep the suspects' passports. You may want to talk to him. Here, I'll show you the butter and the box we found it in. Wow! The box is a typical common, uh, type commonly used for protecting delicate art. It is measured, it measured about one foot square. The statue of Buddha is carefully carved out of a green stone called jade. Hey, Juicy. Oh dear, children. I'm ter It's terrible to be the suspect of a crime. I didn't do anything. You must hurry and prove me innocent. I brought up some carved stone fish from Iceland from the sweet up to the sweet. I sold them to Madame Wen, and who bought some wonderful battle cloth from another collector. I've brought my passport. It shows I've never been to bed in my life. That should clear me of suspicion. Melinda Drews's passport shows many trips to Iceland. It also showed she went to Hong Kong two weeks ago. All right. Here's a video of Mrs. Boran. I went to the rooms of Mrs. Polaria. There, I sold some Berkeley co cloth to the Englishman, Mr. Ja uh, Miles. Hmm, dear, I said that wrong, sorry. Mr. Miles. I also bought some fine African braces from Mrs. Polaria herself. I do not know anything about the stolen Buddha. That is all I wish to say. This video is labeled Chutney Miles. I'm Chutney Z. Miles, Esquire of Christchurch, New Zealand. Why does everyone say that you have an English accent if you're from New Zealand? I, ugh. I quite resent being questioned in this matter. I assure you I had no part of the theft of the Tibetan Island. And because I was told you're British, you get a British accent, even though New Zealand accent is completely different. I paid a visit to my friend, Mrs. Polaria, earlier this evening. We bought and sold art. I did most of the buying. <laughs> I bought two boxes and sold one. That's all I know about this affair. Alright, what about this one? Hmm. Here's the video statement of Madame Wench. Since she speaks no English, her statements are translated by her daughter, May. My mother says she is saddened to be the suspect of such a crime. Nothing like this has ever happened to her before. She came to Mrs. Polaria to see what sort of arts might be for sale. I helped my mother negotiate the sale of some carved stonefish to Mr. Miles. We got a good price for them. Neither my mother nor I know anything about the stolen Buddha. Oh, the, these things are all kind of going a bit pear-shaped. Here's a video statement of Mrs. Polaria. I met with my fellow art collectors from all over the world. I sold my African bracelets for a good price. I forget to whom. While I was looking at art, one of my guests must have slipped the box containing the Buddha under the chair or wherever it was found. If you want any more information, talk to my lawyer. Ooh, bitchy. Well, let's go to the bank. Wow, look at your spiffy coat, Mr. Fan. Here's Mr. Green. He met with the foreign visitors after they came down from the Andrew Jackson suite. And look, that man must be Detective Wet Fan from Hong Kong. Hey, Mr. Wet Fan. Hello, children. Are you the young detectives Chief Barnes told me about? Never mind. I deduce that you are. Ah, ah, ah. I'm Wet Fan, detective from Hong Kong at your service. Glad to meet you, Mr. Fan. Rizoka and I are working on the Buddha case. So you are. I've heard. Have you heard the suspects of this of the statement of the suspects? They're at the police station. They are very confusing. I tried to figure out who sold what to whom, but it's beyond me. Everyone sold at least one box to someone else. Whoever placed the Buddha under the sofa might have brought another box from someone else, which would disguise the fact that one of the boxes they brought up with them was missing. Hmm. If no one bought any more boxes than they sold, then Mrs. Polaria must be guilty, because she came down with one box less than she'd come up with. Hmm. I had dinner with Mrs. Polaria, Mr. Giles, Mr. Boran, and Mrs. Juice, and Madame Wen and her daughter. They're all charming people. And Mrs. Polaria is such a good customer of ours. I cannot believe that any of them stole a Buddha. Here are the passports from their suspects, except for Melinda Juice's. Mr. Fan said you could have a look at them. 
All right, here are the four passports. One from Mrs. Boran, Chutney Miles, Madame Wen, and Mrs. Polaria. Boy, each of them seems to have traveled a lot. Hmm, only one of the suspects was in Tibet when the bull and Buddha was stolen. Mad Mrs. Boran. Mrs. Polaria was in Australia. Oh, God. Madame Wen was in Taiwan, and Chutney Mail Miles was in Borneo at that time. I wouldn't pay too much attention to that young detective. I know the person we are seeking didn't steal the Buddha, but he or she bought it, or knowing it was stolen, which is just a great crime, in my opinion. It is? Anyway, we're out of time, so we'll be back next episode to, you know, investigate further. So yeah, see you guys soon. Bye-bye.